Welcome participants. Now we are going to move in lecture 2 uh, of week 2. So, today the topic uh, is chosen regarding flat bed knitting machine uh, and today we are going to have detailed observation on how needle and cam interact during loop formation. Let us have a quick revision of uh, what we have done in the last lecture. We introduced you a kind of machine, weft knitting machine, especially the flat bed knitting machine. We also talked about uh, the functioning of latch needle, which is the heart of knitting, how this latch needle is fixed on this bed and each latch needle is making a particular loop in a column of the fabric. During this loop making formation, the latch needle has to go certain movements. It started from latch opening to because of the old loop. We also discussed about how the latch in the needle are self operating. So, the old loop simply slide down the latch to open it. Then the loop gets cleared. Once the loop gets cleared, the head of the needle is free to catch the new yarn. You can see here it is catching the new yarn and then it, the needle starts sliding down due to which it starts pulling up the new yarn. Simultaneously, the old loop starts to slide up. Because of that, the latch starts to close and finally, once the latch closed fully, the old loop is knocked out from the needle and in this way, the new loop is getting formed and the old loop is get stuck with the new loop. So, we have a brief understanding of how each part of the needle helps in loop formation. So, the most fundamental part was the hook, latch and the butt. Now, let us move to the next section. Today, what we are going to learn about is the first thing which is uh, most important in almost all kind of knitting process is needle cam interaction. This is the most fundamental thing and we need to understand this in detail because this is the basis for understanding all the structures which we are going to deal in next few weeks. I am also going to introduce to you the cam system, how the different cams are arranged and how they help to interact with the needle and decides its movement. So, you can see here is the track which is made by some of the cams. So, we are going to discuss this cam system or the cam track in detail. After that, we are also going to learn about how we can play with the machines to make different fabric designs. So, some design aspects we are also going to cover in this particular lecture. Now, let us move. So, straight away, we need to understand how needle and cam interacts during knitting. So, just a quick recap. In the last week, I showed you one of the video where the needle was placed on the bed this is the needle bed and I am showing you the movement of one particular needle. So, here is this cam which is interacting with this needle and because of this needle is doing some kind of reciprocative movement. So, you can see here the needle just goes out from the bed and there is going is inside. Simultaneously, once the cam jacket moves from the opposite direction, the same movement was repeated. So, this is happening because the butt of the needle is following a path and this path is created by cam jacket. So, we are going to understand about this path. So, some fundamental things. So, this butt is the responsible part which helps in the reciprocation of the needle and it is following a track inside the cam jacket. The cam you have seen in this video also, the cam is moving from left to right and right to left on the machine and because of that, the butt is forced to follow the track inside the cam jacket. And once the butt follows, the needle is forced to move a kind of reciprocative movement which you can see it here. So, during this process, the needle is undergoing certain specific position of loop formation. So, for example, when you take the snapshot at this particular moment, each needle is having different positioning during the loop formation and we have discussed this in detail also, how this is the first position which is the resting position, it is holding the loop. The second needle is uh, doing the latch clearing because the butt is at the different location of the track. 
you can see here this one is the maximum height or the maximum forward movement which was happened to this particular needle and this is the clearing position and here you can see the butt is actually at the highest point of the track. After that it is going down, you can see here the downward movement. So this particular needle is at this position where the butt is pulling the yarn and finally at this position you can see it is forming the loop as well as it is releasing the old loop. So this kind of positioning of needle is well designed because of the track which is provided by the cam jacket. So in this lecture we are going to understand why this type of track is designed and what is its role. So the key takeaway from this particular point is the needle butt has to follow the path of the cam track inside the cam jacket. So it is the track which we have to design specifically to make sure the knitting is happening properly. So again uh, let us have a quick look on the machine because it is not just one needle we are operating, we are operating thousand of needles or maybe sometimes 50, 60 needles depending on the fabric width. So here you can see I am just showing you how by a hand also you can do this kind of reciprocative movement and operating the butt and because of this the needle is moving, coming out and going inside in the bed in a certain slot. The same thing is happening because of this cam jacket. So this is the cam jacket when we are taking the cam jacket from left to right of the machine, you can see the needle is doing the same movement as it is shown in the left video. Okay. So here you can see the needle is doing the same thing. So, uh, so this is happening because of some kind of track that needle butt has to follow. So we are going to understand these tracks which is created by cam system. Right now we are going to discuss about this particular cam jacket of the single bed flat bed machine. So if you reverse the cam jacket it will look like this. So this is the back side view of the cam jacket. At this moment it looks very complicated. You can easily see uh, it consists of lot of metallic raised blocks and these blocks are placed in a specific order and at this moment you would not be able to understand what was the track the needle was following but let us have a look to this particular cam track in detail. So first of all the cam is nothing but a kind of metallic block you can say which interacts with the needle butt and once the needle butt interacts it follows the path which is created by the series of cams which is there inside this block. A series you can easily see there are a lot of nut bolts are there, so screws are there. So many metallic blocks are arranged. So a group of cams are specifically placed on this platform. Okay? This is called the entire uh, surface is called cam plate and on this cam plate a small small metallic blocks are placed. Right combination of these cams create a path for needle butt and because of that needle is doing a kind of reciprocating movement on the bed while operating the knitting action. How it moves? So here is a small video you can see how the butt is interacting and following the path. Here you can see uh, the butt here. So the butt is following this path and now you can see that because of this cam it is raising up and then it is again going down and then Again you can see because of this hindrance it has to go down and then it come back to its original position. If you carefully look at these it looks like a symmetric placement of each of these cams. So once you reverse the path of cam jacket the butt has to follow the same kind of nature of movement. So you can see here it again raised goes down then again down and finally come back to its original position and this process is repeating when you are traversing the cam jacket from left to right or right to left. So ideally if you see the movement of needle and cam, so the cam is moving on a horizontal plane of the needle bed from left to right or right to left while needle is doing a kind of 90 degree motion, also it is doing the reciprocative movement with the respect of uh, bed 
and needle and cam are having 90 degree difference in the movement. Let us see what exactly is happening here. So, uh, here is the butt, uh, the needle. So, once the cam approaches the butt of the needle, it get engaged with the metallic wall here. You can see these are the metallic wall. And because of that, this butt starts following the path which is available to it. So, uh, what exactly happens? So, here you can see the butt is going and then butt starts raising and then it is going down and coming out from the other end. So, the actual path, if you carefully follow the path, you can easily see the butt initially remains in the same line, then it starts raising. So, raising means it is actually coming out from the bed and after that it goes down, again goes down and then finally it raises to the same original locations. So, this is how the cam track and the series of cam helps the butt to do or uh, to make the right kind of reciprocative movements. During this process, you have seen this butt was interacting with lot of metallic blocks. So, let us see the role of each metallic blocks. So, the first metallic block which it hits, the butt hits was the raising cam. And this raising cam by name it suggested, you have also seen the path, the butt, the moment it hits this particular cam, it is forced to raise. So, that is why this is called raising cam. And once this is done, then the second cam is also making this butt to raise further. It finally reaches to a maximum height or you can say the location of this particular needle is away from the bed, the maximum distance, uh, where it actually releases the old loop from the hook and the latch. So, this particular cam which is responsible for clearing the old loop is called clearing cam. Once clearing cam is done, the feeder provides the yarn to the needle and needle starts going down. So, this is the downward movements you can see here, the path is free and needles goes down. After that, it is striking this particular cam. So, this cam again since the moment the butt strikes here, it is forced to go further down. And during this process is actually, it is pulling the yarn as well as the old loop is closing the latch. And during this entire downward movement, latch is closed, old loop is knocked down and new yarn is also pulled to make a new loop. So, this is stitch cam, that is why it is known as stitch cam because it is the main fundamental cam uh, which helps in the stitching of the loops on the flatbed machine. After that, it strikes again and you can see here it is again raising. So, this particular is the up throw cam. Up throw cam is nothing but it is helping this uh, needle to go back to its original position and after that the path is clear and the needle after performing this knitting actions come back and stay on the same position on the bed from where it started. Apart from these camps you can see, so there are so many other camps, uh, some camps are the guard camp. By the name itself it suggests that it is guarding the butt to follow this path. So, guard cam actually helps to make the needle stay in the path to not let the needle to go away from the uh, designated part. So, that is why it is called guard cam. So, in totality, these each of these metallic blocks has certain function and role to play during this knitting process. And this is the path you can see. So, the raising cam, then clearing cam. So, you can see here both this raising and clearing cam is forcing this needle to raise up or get away from the bed so that it can clear the old loop. After that, it has to go down so that it can catch the new yarn, pull it knock out as well as uh, release the old loop and make a new loop. Once the job is done, it has to go back to its original position. So, that is why this is again it is raising and this up throw cam is helping to do that. This is how it works. If you reverse the path, the same nature of movement is observed. So, you can see here again the butt is going, then coming down, then down and then finally come to original position. 
this time the cam jacket movement was from left to right and with respect to cam jacket the needle was moving towards left while in the previous slides the needle was moving towards right and the cam was moving from right to left this is the actual path when you reverse the movement of cam jacket so again it raises goes down then down and then finally come back to its original position if you want to observe the kind of metallic block which helps in this movements again we start from the raising cam the same function it helps to raise the needle the because the path is like that after that clearing cam this actually helps the needle to release the old loop from the latch and also it helps to make sure to catch the new yarn then stitch cam then up throw cam and finally the guard cam so if you carefully observe when the needle was coming from this side this particular up throw cam was acting like a raising cam so now the function is just reversed and the stitch cam was acting as a clearing cam when the needle was coming from the this side so because of the symmetric the role of left metallic blocks are just reversed than the right metallic blocks so in totality these are the five cams which is quite popular in most of the weft knitting machines and they are always there to make sure the movement of the butt follow a certain path again there is small videos if you want to zoom it you can easily able to appreciate how this butt was interacting with each of these cams let's see again so you can see here the butt is going and the path is clear now the path is raising so this particular cam is the raising cam again you can see this metallic block it is making the butt to release move up this is clearing cam then it goes down during this process it is catching the yarn then again you can see it is going down then down this is stitch cam and finally this is the up throw cam which is forcing it to go up and then needle goes back to original position again when you are reversing the path again you can see this become the raising cam then this is clearing cam then this particular metallic block becomes stitch cam and then this one become up throw cam and finally it goes back to its original position so this is how needle interacts with different cam during knitting process and each of these cams the timing and positioning is designed so carefully that it follows all the knitting action in a sequence so let's see what exactly is happening when the butt is positioned at different location inside the cam jacket so butt is entering for some time the needle remains in the same position because the path is clear and after that it is hitting here the raising cam this is where you can say the latch starts open so because the needle is rising since the needle is holding the old loop and it is rising so because of that the old loop slides down on the latch and latch starts to open after that you can see the path is still remain upward and because of that the needle start raising even further due to which the latch become completely open and finally the old loop slides down away from the latch so now the old loop is free from hook as well as latch interactions so this old loops now slides on the stem part so you can see here also the lines are also drawn to make you understand much the needle has moved away from the bed so you can see here this was the resting position and finally this was the clearing position you can see the difference so it has to move certain centimeter uh, to make sure the old loop is completely uh, cleared from the hook or latch once the old loop is clear you can see the hook is now free now new yarn is now provided to this particular hook and once the new yarn is provided the needle starts to descend so you can see here it is starting descend and during this descending process it is still holding this new yarn and after that for some time it remains on the same height and 
after that it is going to hit this particular metallic block and because of this it has to go down. Once it hits this metallic block and it starts doing the downward motion, since uh, it is doing the downward motion, the old loop it starts sliding on the top of the needle and due to which it makes sure to close the latch because now at this moment the old loop is underneath the latch and once the old loop slides with respect to needle it automatically closes the latch and once the latch is closed completely and the old loop is near head it actually released from the or knocked from the needle and after that you can see still there is certain downward movement is there this is where the hook is still is pulling the new yarn and this is the point where it actually make the loop length because it is still pulling the yarn during the downward motion. Once uh, the new yarn is pulled come uh, and sufficient length of loop is formed, now the job is done but you can see here the location of needle is still downward and it has to go back to its original position so that is why it, it is you can see the path here is raised and this particular cam the direction is upward so this is up throw cam so again it forces the needle butt to go back to its original position so here you can see this was the original resting position this was the original resting position so they are exactly at the same location or same height once the needle reaches to this position it simply comes out from the other side this is how each of these cams are placed specifically to make sure needle does the right motion. Also sufficient time is given or considered uh, during the knitting process. So the design of uh, this cam system is highly scientific in the sense so that knitting can be done very smoothly. If you reverse this process again the same thing is happening it starts from the resting position again it hits here and the latch starts opening then it hits the clearing cam and at this moment the old loop comes out and it is raised to the maximum height now it is catching the new yarn and since it is going downward movements automatically the old loop starts closing the latch because it is underneath the latch after that it hits the stitch cam you can see here it is showing the downward movement so the now the latch is closed completely and because of that the old loop is knocked out from the needle completely and the new yarn is still locked in the latch and head. So after that it reaches further down because of that it creates sufficient length of loop because it is pulling the yarn so one sufficient length of yarn is there it helps to create the loop length after that the job is done the up throw camps helps this needles to go back to its resting position and rest once it comes out from the cam jacket. In totality these 5 cams which we discussed just now rising cam, clearing cam, stitch cam, up throw cam and guard cam are the most fundamental metallic blocks which is almost there in most of the weft knitting machines and now you can also able to appreciate why these cams are so important. Raising cam is helping in lifting, latch opening, Clearing cam is helping to lift to maximum position, old loop is clear from the needle, stitch cam is helps in yarn pulling, latch closing, knocking, new loop. So stitch cam is extremely important, you can see how many functions it is doing during the downward movements. Up throw cam is also important because we have to make sure the needle remains ready once we are changing the direction of cam jacket. And guard cam is also very important for the protection because it limits the butt movements only in the track. It also prevents needle not to fall out from the track. So each of these metallic blocks are extremely important during knitting process and in most of the knitting machines especially in weft knitting machines if you carefully observe the metallic blocks you will be able to find out some of these cams. Right now what we showed you was just one of the cam jacket of the first machines which we started in the week 1. Obviously once we move to the different machines you will observe different types of cam profile, different types of metallic blocks 
but the fundamental principle remains same. Some camps has to raise, some helps the needles to clear, some camps helps the needle in downward movement, which is especially the stitch cam. So role of these camps are always there. Now let's move to the important part for the designer point of view, how we can help uh, use these machines for fabric design. We have made some of these samples on the machines, which I am going to show you. Let's first see some of these samples and then we will demonstrate to you how you can play with the machine elements and make different designs of the fabrics. So uh, here you can see the first thing which you can easily do on the knitting machine is changing the color pattern. So here you can see here we are having orange color of yarn and simultaneously you can change the yarn, you can feed different color of yarn and you can come up with different types of stripes. Also next thing what you can do is uh, you can easily see here the loops are much much bigger, the fabric looks more porous but here you can see the loops become smaller and compact. You can also play with the porosity of the fabric and you can repeat this process and you can make whatever length of the fabric you want on this machine. Other thing what you can do is uh, you can also play with the width of the fabric. So here you can see you started with certain columns and then you are increasing the width of the fabric. So, so you can see here the width is increasing, okay. You can go to any width and the moment you want to narrow down, you can select different amount of needles and you can still come up with a smaller number of columns. So this is some of the design possibilities which are there on the machines and uh, this actually helps you to make the different designs of the fabrics. Let's see some of these designs and understand how this machine elements which we discussed helps in these designing. The first thing is before we start, in the first week I uh, talked about some of the terminologies while discussing the structure I discussed about that each loop is made up of head, two legs and two foot. And uh, I also talked about how two legs and one head, this complete unit is called the needle loop. I hope you remember from the first week lecture. And uh, the second thing which I talked about was uh, when the two loop is connected by the foot, two consecutive foot and these two consecutive foot is called the sinker loop. So in each of these fabrics, the needle loop and sinker loop are present. So we define two terms for the fabric loops, needle loop and sinker loop. Needle loop consists of one head and two, two leg, while the sinker loop consists of two foots. So let's see how we make the needle loop, why we give this particular segment of loop as a needle loop. So you can see here in this machine, if you carefully observed, the needle actually, especially at this location, is making the head part and two leg part during the downward movements. So now you would be able to appreciate why this is called needle loop because the needle is actually pulling the yarn towards the bed and because of this two legs and one head is created. So latch needle helps in making needle loop section. So that's why since the needle is completely responsible for making this part of the loop, so that's why this segment is called needle loop. But if you see the sinker part, who is making this particular sinker part? So here there is a another element on the machine, you might not have observed this. The other element on the machine was the verge. So you can see here, once the needle was coming out from the bed, it is actually coming out in between uh, two verge. So you can see here, this is the verge part and uh, while pulling, this verge actually provides support for to this sinker loops. So without this verge, it would be difficult for the needle to pull the yarn inside the bed. So this verge is important segment, although the name is not coming directly from the verge loop, 
it is called single loop because there is another element on different machines where other element on the machine which is called sinker which is responsible for making this sinker loop. So, that is why it is called sinker loop, but at this moment that sinker element is not there in this particular machine, but once we move to the next lecture, I will talk about sinker loop part and this particular word sinker. This is another machine element which we need to understand very carefully. But at this moment, this machine is free from uh, sinker loop. The verge is playing the role to make this sinker loop because once the needle is catching the yarn going inside the bed, the verge is there to support. And because of this support, the sinker part or this yarn segment get struck with the verge and due to which sinker loop is created. You can see here um, in this video also you would be able to see what is exactly happening. So, you can see here this needle is coming down and this two verge on left side and right side is there and which helps to give support to the yarn segment. Okay? This is the needle, this is the verge part. You can see here this is the verge part I am showing you by needle. This has to be there otherwise the knitting would not be happening because we cannot simply make the needle part. We also need the support system to support this segment of yarn during knitting process. Loop length control, just now I showed you one of the fabric where you can easily observe like some places the loop density was bigger and at some places the loop density was smaller. Because of bigger loop length you can observe this part of fabric is highly porous, this part of fabric is highly dense. And this is all happening because of how we are doing the knitting. So, here if you see this particular segment, this particular needle, uh, if it goes further inside, you can pull or you can take maximum length of yarn and in this way you can create bigger loops. But if you make sure the X remain smaller, you can create smaller loops. So, it depends how much downward movement is happening to the needle which decides the loop length on the machine. So, there is a knob on the machines which you just rotate it and it will change the functioning of stitch cam and ideally this stitch cam actually change the distance to which this particular needle can descend and go up. So, this is what is happening during the loop length control. Here you can see this is the stitch cam which I showed you. So, in cam setting 1 this stitch cam was slightly straight. So, the butt was somewhere here position. So, it simply goes like this and then raises up. But if you see in different cam setting positions, so the butt is forced to go even more down. So, if it goes down, it takes more length of yarn and it creates bigger loops and this is the smaller loop. So, the cam setting one results to smaller loop length because of the positioning of stitch cam is different. But for creating bigger loop length, the positioning of a stitch cam is different. So, you can see here the butt is going more down. So, more down means more X, more X means more yarn length and more yarn length means bigger loops. So, this is how what is happening on the machines. You can see here the direction also it is showing completely it is going little bit more down. Here you can see the small video what is exactly happening. This is stitch cam. And now um, the stitch cam setting is getting changed. You can see here it is, it is going down and because of this it forces this butt to go even more uh, downward position. So, because of that the yarn length or yarn consumptions is more and loop length increases. So, playing with the loops is one of the fundamental key elements which is helpful more not only in design but also in engineering. You can play with the comfort of the fabrics by playing loop length because you can change the porosity, you can then lot of fabric properties can change. Stitch cam is the most important metallic block on the cam jacket which plays this function. Another thing which I showed you just that how you can play with different needles and you can control the width of the fabric directly on the machines, which is not possible on the woven fabric uh, productions because in woven fabric you have to actually cut the fabrics. 
but here knitting gives you that flexibility because you can start with let's suppose 10 columns or 10 loops and then you can increase the needles on both the sides you can increase the width of the fabric so this is possible so in one of the lecture i also showed you that there are two position of the butt one was resting position one was working positions and each needles add one veil to the fabric so more needles if you select on the needle bed you can create more veils and more veils means more width of the fabric and selecting of the needles is highly flexible so while running one particular uh, fabric on the machines you can increase or decrease the needles that is operating or engaging with the cam jacket i showed you two positions of the needles so non working position and working positions so non working positions remain ideal because this butt does not engage with the cam jacket but uh, working position this butt engage with the cam jacket so during any time you can push this butt downward and upward depending on what type of design you want to create so um, you can see here simultaneous we started with one needle then three needle five needles everything is possible other thing which you can do is like any time you can change the color of uh, yarn by feeding different yarns and you can create stripe design of the fabric so here is a small video you can see so currently it is consuming red color of yarn now i started feeding yellow color of yarn you can see here automatically this yellow color become the part of the fabric system which is also a unique flexibility that knitting gives not the weaving because in weaving changing any warp thread it means extremely difficult so clearly knitting is much flexible compared to weaving process and if you understand the technology well the possibilities are enormous now let's summarize what we learned in this particular lecture we talked about needle and cam interaction so the whole lecture was devoted um, only to cam and the track which was created by these metallic blocks so this is another cam but we mainly focused on the single bed cam system the main principle remains same it always have certain uh, section of uh, metallic blocks and these blocks are called cams uh, ideally there are five to six cams operating during the knitting process one is stitch cam clearing cam guard cam raising cam and up throw cam so even if we change the cam jacket some tracks will be created some metallic blocks will help the needle to raise some metallic blocks will help the needle to downward motion so the fundamental principle will remain same even if we change the machine so next time once we will be discussing the different machines i am not going to go in the detail part so i hope uh, you would be able to understand these cam system well these cam system are fundamentally extremely important to locate the butt positions to do certain functions of knitting so this was loop formation process we started from the resting position of the needle then the latch of the needle opens up then it all loops get cleared come out from the latch after that the head is free so head of the needle is catching the yarn then it is pulling up then latch is getting closed finally the old loop is knocked over and the loop is getting formed and again the needle goes back to resting position so the process is actually in a very synchronized way and the timing is also extremely crucial during the knitting process so, and similarly the process is so synchronized the interaction or the positioning of raising clearing stitch cam and up throw cam on the cam jacket is also synchronized in certain way so first it the needle butt interacts raising cam to do this particular operation of knitting then it interacts with clearing cam to do this particular two operations of uh, loop formations then it interacts with the stitch cam and you can see how important is the stitch cam because it helps in yarn pulling latch closing knocking loop formation and finally up throw cam which helps or make sure the needle remains in the same starting position which is the resting positions so with this we are going to stop this needle cam interactions in this lecture in next lecture we are going to introduce you circular bed knitting so see you soon thank you mm -hmm.